across all the five scales of the Biennale, the question of climate change is very present. When we think about our future as one planet, the protection of the oceans, the protection of uh, resources, the creation of uh, global commons is there. Architecture is expanding uh, its uh, understanding and its empathy uh, towards other living things. Um, so I think we really are looking at a time where perhaps the focus should not be on building more and making more profits, more shopping malls, more highliners, it's uh, you know uh, uh, high t uh, tall buildings, etc. But rather, um, it, it is an architecture of dissolving where we perhaps step back and give space to uh, other uh, non-human animals and um, other forms of uh, life. So you can see the planet begin to appear through the lines of infrastructure and hundreds of I mean, dense with this extreme density. The outlines of. It really, it pictures the world as one planet and it starts to um, ask how we can um, engage in the world in a different way, how we treat the idea of what is known and unknown. And it shows the world as being essentially, as you can see, being unfolded or cracked open. And it shows, it has two sides. It has an inside and an outside. On the outside, we show the world in the way in which we have inhabited it thus far, all the lines we have traced upon it. So all the air routes, uh, the sea cables, the satellite paths and so on that uh, over millennia have circumscribed the globe with our footprint essentially. It's um, sort of, it's the infrastructure, it's sort of how we as humans have materialized, have come to know and have come to materialize ourselves on the world, how we kind of travel and know mm -hmm. the world. So and we haven't actually drawn the geography, but the geography appears through the infrastructural networks and lines. So the world emerges through all the traces we have made rather than the kind of binary condition of showing all the continents or land masses. Yeah. I think it's important that we shift our attention to Antarctica um, to, to understand what's happening there and make sure that we promote policies that can ensure its, its preservation and protection because whatever happens there has an effect here. And we stand in Venice, we're the first to go under. Um, so it, it's really crucial, I think, for, for all the coastal communities around the world and sort of the global ecosystem to actually at least take awareness of what's happening. What we wanted to show here is sort of an architecture of the future that shows how we can actually tackle some of the grand challenges that we are facing in the built environment, like the enormous consumption of resources, the enormous carbon emissions that are related to the production of concrete, how we can actually rethink the situation by building not with solid materials, but building with fibers. <laughs> Yeah, no.
to be able to grow, harvest and consume the algae. Uh, the exhibition is divided in three parts. Uh, these are the membranes uh, where algae are grown on a suspension that is jellified with agar. And this is where the cultures are held alive. It's like a vertical laboratory, if you want. And then we have the most productive part, which is just behind me, which is the vertical garden uh, with the reactors containing each one of them, 10 liters of, uh, of uh, chlorella. And each reactor actually produces enough vegetable proteins for a small family. So something this big could be already uh, uh, enough to feed the 10 families, more or less. Cells. And then we have worked with this chef to develop a liquid. without consequences, the use of the internet, um, and it's not without a material footprint. And if you look at trends in terms of uh, our network usage, it's, it's only going to exponentially rise with 5G. Um, so we're at this point in time highlighting what the reality of it is um, to, to um, I suppose, to at least start a conversation um, that doesn't exist already in terms of a uh, common discourse, and certainly in Ireland. Mm -hmm.